Good morning everybody and anybody. I'm Mike and welcome to Mainstream Moto where we do some how-to's, some DIY's, some motorcycle trips and camping and stuff so you might consider subscribing if you're interested in things like that. Today I'm going to be talking about the things that I like and don't like about the V-Strom. Now this one's particularly pointed at my V-Strom but I'm going to try to cover some things as just the V-Strom in general. And these are in no particular order, except for maybe the last one. So we'll cover the things that I like about it first. Now just a little bit of background. I have had this bike for about nine years. I've put about 45,000 miles on it. So not a gob, but enough to make a valid opinion, I think. <laughs> so the very first thing on the list is range. I love the range of the V-Strom. V-Strom's got dang near 300 miles of range. I think if you were to run it completely on empty, or too empty, I mean. Now I can get about 250 miles out of a tank. And the reason why that's so nice is because if you do go uh, on motorcycle trips with other people, you rarely have to stop anybody for gas. Unless, you, unless everybody has like crazy range on their bikes, but for the most part, you're not the one that has to stop everybody and get gas, and so you don't worry about it. Plus it makes riding it a bit inexpensive. The second thing is, is that there are gobs of upgrades for this bike. It's got kind of a cult following kind of thing. And if you want it for the bike, they make it. And that's, that's really nice. Um, I've got a little Honda Twin Star, and it's an older bike, but I can't find a center stand for it. I would love to just have a center stand for it. That's all. That's all I want. But I can't seem to find one. Number three is it's spacious. It's very comfortable as far as just being being roomy. You don't feel kind of cramped on the bike. I'm just under six foot. Probably about six foot with boots on. <laughs> I'm kind of upset that I didn't hit the six foot mark, but that's a, that's a story for another time. But the V-Strom is nice and spacious. Very nice and spacious. You don't feel cramped up. The, the, the bars are, are wide, but they're not real wide like some adventure bikes. But it feels very comfortable as far as just having room the bars are kind of away from you and it kind of depends also on how you set it up which we will get into later and number four on the list is reliability these bikes are known to be bulletproof as a figure of speech I guess <laughs> riding it for 45,000 miles it has 55 well let's see it's got 54,527 miles on it so we're going to call it 55,000. And out of that 55,000 miles, I have not had to do anything to the bike except routine maintenance of changing tires, chain sprockets, and things like that. It's just typical maintenance that you have to do. And that's all I've done. I've never had to do anything major. And these bikes have been known to do 150,000 miles, which is, I think that's pretty neat that uh, I might be able to get another 100,000 miles out of this. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool. I wonder if that's windy. Let me put this down. Might be a little bit better for audio, I guess. And so it's really nice having a bike that you, you can just have confidence in that it's, it's gonna start in the morning. It's never acted up in any way, shape, or form. The only time that I ever had an issue with it was, there's a little wire under here that connects to the clutch it's just a typical Suzuki thing to have to pull in the clutch to start the bike. That popped out and I couldn't stop. I couldn't stop. I couldn't start the bike. Anyway, reliability. These things are just known to be super reliable and that's it's comforting, I think, to just know that if you go on a trip or something, it's going to start, it's going to make it. Don't worry about it. Just, just that extra peace of mind. So number five is that it's quiet. Now I know a lot of people aren't going to really like that. They like loud, noisy bikes, and I'm not opposed to it. I'm not opposed to aftermarket exhausts that give good sounds, but I like the fact that this bike is quiet. I like to tread softly. I don't like to be intrusive. And I've actually snuck up on people on this bike. I've pulled up almost right next to them, and I was right there before they even noticed. Yeah, it's too hot for that. I've also been in a parking lot waiting to start the bike up and someone like comes out of a store and they're in the car right next to me and they can tell I'm about to start the bike up and you can see it on their faces that they're just kind of thinking oh this is going to be loud I don't want to 
they, they kind of tilt their head sideways like they're protecting their ears and I start the bike up and they kind of relax and grin a little bit because it's just it's just so peaceful almost you know so not everybody's gonna consider that a, a plus but I do because I like to be very non-intrusive I like to be able to travel through a campsite or something without bothering other campers anyway I like how quiet it is but even though it's quiet that brings us to number six is that the engine is very grunty I love the engine even though the the bike runs pretty quiet with the exhaust the engine is ooh, that's a hole the engine is louder than the exhaust <laughs> by far when you're riding the bike the engine seems very grunty uh, sounding even but some say the 650 in the V-Strom is an overachiever and it is a very a nice little torquey engine Ooh, that's another hole oof da man there's a lot of holes through here I can't see them because of the shadows but the 650 engine in the V-Strom is fantastic it's happy anywhere you put it it's got a lot of low-end grunt um, it doesn't give a lot of power up high you don't have to rev it up high to get that power and I love that about it so it has a lot of very usable range number seven is that it's a pretty inexpensive bike I made a video of everything that I've put on the bike and and what it's cost me to be a motorcyclist but you know to get a hold of one of these bikes which sometimes is the hardest part about motorcycling is just getting your hands on a motorcycle and then you can kind of save up little bits here and there to upgrade it and make it the way that you want it but this bike is pretty dang cheap to get a hold of I had just my wife has just got her own not that long ago and we bought that bike for thirty six hundred dollars didn't have to talk the guy down or anything that's just what he was asking for it and it's a it is a buttery smooth bike I mean it's got about 40,000 miles on it but if these things go typically 150,000 miles then that's not like high mileage or anything but for 3600 bucks that's really not bad and I've seen them for cheaper buyer beware I guess but <laughs> and I know to some people the you know the price of the bike is not going to be the biggest issue but to be completely honest with you I'm not really well off and so if you couldn't get a cheaper bike like this it would probably mean that I wouldn't be able to be a motorcyclist that's probably what it would mean for me if I had to go and spend 15 16 7 25 thousand dollars for a, mo a new motorcycle or even a used motorcycle I wouldn't be able to do it so the fact that it's inexpensive is really <laughs> It's really a plus otherwise I wouldn't be here <laughs> and that brings us to number eight and that is the looks of this motorcycle now this is a debatable topic but looks are very subjective so what what appeases one person's eye doesn't appease another's and like I said this is this is uh, things that I like about the V-Strom I understand this doesn't please everybody but I think that the bike looks really cool even from the first day that I saw a V-Strom I thought it looked cool and that exact same day I was talking with a salesman for the V-Strom I was looking at and I was looking at all kinds of bikes and the salesman told me he pointed at a V-Strom it was a black V-Strom brand new and he says you could ride this ugly thing and I just thought what are you talking about that's a that, I like the look of that bike I like everything about it and I stood there in the dealership looking at the bike and I just couldn't find a thing about it that I didn't like so I understand I know a lot of people have called it ugly but that's okay I know it doesn't appease everybody but me personally I like the way it looks I think it looks awesome every time I go in the garage and look at it I still think it looks awesome so that brings us to number nine number nine is it's easy to maintain the maintenance on it is super super easy oil changes are super easy working on the forks chain and sprocket changing tire changing one of the complaints is that the the oil filter is just sticking right out in the middle of nowhere and I guess if you do hit a rock with it then then yeah that would be bad <laughs> but when it comes to maintaining it it's really nice having that oil filter right out there in the open the air filter takes a little bit of work to get to but it usually just takes some time but it's not frustrating I don't mind putting in time when it comes to working on something I don't mind if something takes you know an entire day but if you're pulling your hair out all day 
That's what I can't stand. I cannot stand that. I have heard that the valves are, are pr a pretty big pain in the butt. Um, I had my valves adjusted uh, at the dealership, cost about $250. And I've read stories online of people trying to adjust the valves on this and they end up taking the whole thing apart and have to take it down to the dealership to have them put it back together correctly. So, um, so I probably will never adjust the valves myself. I'll probably just spend the $200, I mean $250, or even if it was $300, I think it would be worth it. I can save up that and have someone do that. And the thing is, is that the increments that the valves need to be adjusted are pretty far apart. So it's not really that big of a deal. So yeah, easy bike to wrench on, other than maybe the valves. <laughs> so that brings us to number 10, the very last thing, and that is its versatility. It's a pretty versatile bike. Now, obviously, we wouldn't try to go up that. Now, I've gone up that before a little ways, and I decided that's, that's too much. So its versatility doesn't expand into that type of area. However, this is the trait that has really surprised me about the V-Strom. Now, like I had said before, uh, we just got my wife one of these bikes. Her bike does have some upgrades. And so that shares a lot of upgrades with this. I do have a different windscreen for mine for when I go on the highway. But for this off-road stuff, it's easier to stay cool with a smaller uh, windshield. The tires. The tires are the same. Give you crash bars. It's got a skid plate. It's got some luggage. Overall, it's, it's in essence the same bike. Now this bike here wants to do exactly what we're doing with it today. It likes these kinds of roads. It even likes these smaller little side roads. Now the bike that we got, my wife, does not want to do this. It wants to see pavement and that's it. That's all it wants to do. Really the only substantial difference between this bike and my wife's bike is this has a progressive suspension up front and rear. So the suspension is a bit more upgraded. It's stiffer. And the way that I have these bars set up is for off-road. And really, that's the only real difference between the two that would make it perform on-road or off-road. It's interesting to me that doing just that to this can make it seem so much more off-road biased. So the V-Strom is advertised or promoted as an adventure sport tourer. That's a big order to fill if you're trying to do really, really, really good in all three categories with one machine. And it doesn't do really, really, really good in any one of those categories because it's trying to cover a, a variety of riding that's pretty dang broad. So when you look at touring, let's take the opposing aspect of that is the dirt roads. You've got two opposing things. Everything that you do to one uh, contradicts the other. You've got street tires and knobbies. Knobbies don't work good on the street. Street tires don't work good off-road. You've got heavy, which is great for highway, uh, light for off-road. They're, they're very contradicting to each other. So being able to make a bike that is an adventure sport tourer is a pretty high order. And you may have heard it said that the V-Strom doesn't do any one thing really, really, really good. It's not amazing at one thing, but it does a variety of things really, really well. And my whole point with this whole thing is that since you have an adventure sport tourer, depending on little tweaks like suspension and handlebar position, to lean it more toward the adventure, get $700 worth of suspension and adjust the bars up, and you've leaned it way more toward the adventure style bike. You're still limited on the ground clearance, but we can get to that later. If you wanted it to be more sporty, you can lean it more toward the sporty aspect by making small upgrades toward the sport. And then in the same way, if you want to tour, you can lean it more toward touring. Like my wife's bike still has the stock suspension. It's, it's soft, it's very plush feeling when you're going down the highway. This is a bit stiffer. It corners better, I think, because the suspension is stiffer, but overall, it's not as easy of a rider on the pavement with the bars up. Tilt those bars back down, get a little bit softer suspension, put a big windshield on that thing. It really changes how the bike reacts. 
So because of that, because of minor adjustments you can do to make it feel more at home on an off-road or an on-highway setting, it's to no surprise to me that when you see a review, why they will call it more of a highway bike. It comes a lot more highway oriented when it's off the showroom floor. It, it really is designed for the highway. So when you hear people saying, well, it's really a, a glorified street bike. If you leave it in its stock setup, absolutely. It's probably not going to want to be off-road very much at all. But it has blown my mind that the two different bikes, a 2008 V-Strom feels like it wants to tear it up off-road. And then you have a 2009 V-Strom. And the only difference is, is the ABS, fork springs and rear suspension, and just the overall setup. That's the only difference. It can do more off-road. So I have taken this on some wider trails and some really narrow trails. And I mean, on one end of the spectrum, you could say, well, it will do it. But on the other end of the spectrum, you could say, no, it doesn't do it. <laughs> and you'd be right either way. What it really boils down to is, is an individual. So if you're the kind of person that wants your bike to take you everywhere, um, then no, the V-Strom does not do those things very well. Now, if you're someone who likes to take your bike somewhere, um, yeah, absolutely it'll do it. And as individuals, we fall somewhere in there of where we want to take the bike and where we want the bike to take us. Some people want the bike to take them everywhere. If they have to take the bike somewhere, then they're, they're on the wrong bike. But then there are others who, you know, they don't mind. Their idea of a good weekend is to go and drag their bike somewhere. How do you explain why someone throws their KTM or, or GS into a mud puddle and then has five guys tie ratchet straps onto the dang thing and everybody pulls the thing out of the mud and then they, co they go over a couple little hills and then they drive right back into a big puddle of mud again and get stuck and fling mud everywhere and get their boots wet and again, throw straps onto the crash bars and have five other people yanking on the bike while they try to ride the thing out. Is that wrong? Absolutely not. That's just an example of someone who likes to take their bike somewhere. <laughs> I'm not taking the bike up here. The bike is taking me up here. I just have to stay on the thing and, and give it some throttle. And up we go. For me personally, when you start getting on the larger trails, that's when you start to cross over into, okay, bike, we're, we're taking each other wherever we're going. You're working at it, but I'm working at it too. I'm having to pull some slack because you can't quite do all this on your own. Having to muscle the thing around, which like I said, some people are totally okay with that. Now for me, as far as easy riding goes, this is, this is perfect. This is absolutely perfect. This is the type of road I feel this bike is searching for and that I'm searching for. And so back to the ground clearance issue, I don't need a lot of ground clearance for this. When you start crossing over into that taking the bike somewhere, you're gonna be looking at some ground clearance issues. And even though the V-Strom does have less ground clearance than a lot of adventure bikes out there, I do still feel like the ground clearance is practical. It may not be as much, but it is practical. So anyway, let's get into the stuff that I do not like about this bike. Oh man, V-Strom, you're gonna get it now. Your self-esteem is gonna go all the way down the toilet. So I've already touched on it a little bit about the, the way that the bike looks. And that's one of the things that I don't really like about it as well. I like the way that it looks. Um, and I really don't care if other people don't like it. There's just sometimes I get tired of hearing it. That's all. And another thing, number two, second thing I don't like about the bike is that you tend to get a bit of a low class stamp on you. Which again, it's one of those things that like, oh, I'll, I'll trade that. Uh, I'll trade that for having a V-Strom and enjoying a V-Strom. Um, but it's another one of those things that just gets annoying where, where you, you know, if someone's like, oh, yeah, what are you riding? And you're like, oh, a V-Strom. Oh, just a V, oh, it's just a V-Strom. Oh, oh, it's just a V-Strom. And I don't feel like that attitude is, is warranted. Looking back on the things that I like about this bike, you're looking at a bike that can do extreme mileage that's very versatile, very reliable, capable in a very realistic way. And a person can still say, oh, oh, it's just a V-Strom. What do you mean it's just a V-Strom? It's an amazing motorcycle. 
It does not fit everybody's needs, but every time that I've gone on a trip, the bike has always ran for me just fine. It's taken me along wherever we've got planned to go. It's taken me there with comfort and reliability. It's been an absolutely amazing bike. Now that's all that I can say for things that I don't like about the V-Strom. Now things that, that, that typically people don't like about the V-Strom is the ground clearance. We've talked to that, about that enough. You obviously don't need a lot of ground clearances if this is what you're doing, but if you want to take the bike places, you might need some more ground clearance. That may, that may hold you up. Um, suspension, stock suspension seems to be a bit squishy. I've changed that on mine, so I can't really complain at this point. For, for highway riding, if you're doing the touring aspect, that suspension is fine. If you're wanting to do a bit faster uh, dirt roads with some potholes and bumps that are here and there that you're going to hit, upgrading your suspension. Progressive suspension is what I put on mine, and it works out absolutely fantastic. Uh, brakes. Brakes are one of the things that people complain about. Uh, that the brakes are just really, really squishy. And in comparison with other bikes, they are a bit squishy. Um, however, I still find them to be adequate. That could just be me. I mean, I know that I can crush a man's skull with my hand, so maybe I can just grab a bit more uh, brake than the average man. <laughs> oh, and another thing, a lot of people uh, do not like the stock windscreen. And you know, you wanna hear some reality? Nobody likes the stock windscreen on hardly any bike. If they do, it is a rarity. It's very rare if someone actually likes the stock windscreen on their motorcycle. It doesn't matter what you get. Most people are going to change the windscreen. So anyway, those are the things that I like and the things that I kind of don't like about the V-Strom as well as what uh, typically people don't like. So if you enjoyed the video, Maybe hit that subscribe button if you want and you will get more. Hey, you know what? It's free and you can always unsubscribe later. You know what I mean? You might as well. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and we will see you next time. I'm Mike and welcome to Mainstream Moto. I do how-tos and DUI, DUIs, I do how-tos and DUIs. I'm not with it today. <laughs> DUI, what are they called? DIYs, not DUIs. <laughs> so anyway, those are the things. Those are the things.